Hey guys, welcome back to Mr. Rail channel. Today I'm going to be discussing the differences between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. And I'm going to discuss in terms of the current, the potential difference, as well as the total resistance. I'm going to show you how to calculate the total resistance. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to give you a question for you to try. So stay tuned. Go into the comparison let's do a quick review on what a series circuit is so a series circuit has only one path of current flow let's take a look at this so current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal remember current is a flow of charge and when we are talking about an electrical circuit like this the charge that is flowing is electron electrons are flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal however current is conventionally taken as flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal so remember here the flow of electrons is what current is so let's follow the path of current so the current path starts at the positive terminal the current flows here and then flows through the first bulb and then flows through the second bulb and flows through the third bulb and back to the negative terminal so you can see here there is no other way for the current to flow there's no other path that the current can take except for this one path this square here this is the path that the current takes now let's compare this with a parallel circuit a parallel circuit is any circuit that has more than one path of current flow Take this circuit for example. So once again, current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Now let's follow the current flow. Here the current flows in the same path, only one path, it goes down here. After it passes through the first bulb, then you see it comes to a junction. So here, some of the current is going to take this path. Some of the current is going to use this path. So now the current has two different paths that it can take and this is known as a parallel circuit then they join back here at this point and go back to the negative terminal so a parallel circuit is when a current has more than one path that it can take let's compare the values of current in a series circuit and a parallel circuit first of all the device that is used to measure current is known as the ammeter so the ammeter measures current and when connected in a circuit, the emitter is connected in series with the component that we want to measure the current flowing through. Let's look at the series circuit first. So remember current only has one path. Here it starts from positive terminal, it goes here and it passes through the emitter and the component. This is what it means by the emitter is connected in series. So if we wanted to measure the current passing through the bulb here, then we would connect the emitter in series with this bulb. So that's what in series means. So let's follow the current. So the current flows through this emitter and it is the same current that flows through the first bulb. So current that passes through A1, I've labeled as I1 here. This I1 is the current that passes through this emitter as well as the first bulb. And then the current comes here and then the same current passes through A2 and the second bulb. I2. This is the current that passes through here. And then the current has nowhere, nowhere else to go. It only has one path. So it follows the same path and then it passes through A3 and the third bulb here before it goes back to the negative terminal here. As you notice, the current did not go anywhere else. It only had one path all the way. So the current I here is the same as I1, is the same as I2, is the same as I3. The current is the same the whole way because it only had one path. It didn't have any other place to go. So the current in a series circuit is the same across all the components in the circuit. Now this is different with a parallel circuit. For a parallel circuit, the current has multiple paths. So let's start again from the positive terminal. So the current comes here. This is I. This is the full current. Now when the current comes here, here is a, it's at a crossroads again. So now the current is going to split. Some of the current is going to go through here. Some of the current is going to go through here. And some of the current is going to go through here. So we get three different values of current. Now the current will not necessarily be 
divided equally among all the parts. The division of the current depends on the resistance in the path itself, the total resistance in the path. So if like for example, if these bulbs are all of the same resistance, then the current will be divided equally. But if the resistance is not the same, then the current will not be divided equally. So you have to do calculation to find the value of current along each path. We use Ohm's law, V equals to IR, if you're using an ohmic conductor. So here, this can get a little bit confusing. So when there is no component in the middle, when it's just connecting wires, then you can visualize this parallel circuit as this. So the current comes here and splits into three. Instead of thinking about the current comes here, splits into two and then splits into two again. That might get a bit confusing. So remember, as long as there's no component in the middle, if we are just dealing with connecting wires, then you can think about the circuit like this. So what happens here, the current here has split. So I1 goes through the first bulb, I2 goes through the second bulb, I3 goes through the third bulb. Different values of current compared to I. I is the total current. Here the current splits. So of course, I1, I2 and I3 will be smaller than I. And I1, I2 and I3 must sum up together to make I. This is the total current that is split into three. That means when we add all these three values here, we must get back I. And then here, at this point here, the current, all the current converges again. So I1, I2 and I3 will converge here and give back I. So let's go through the whole thing again. From the positive terminal, we have total current flowing here. At this path, it splits into three. The current splits into three. And then here, the current converges again back to the same value, the total current. So this is known as the total current. This is the current that is going through each component. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 must equals to I. When it's the series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. There is no addition. Because the current that is flowing, is, this current is only flowing in one part. It never splits. So the value of the current is the same everywhere. Whereas for a parallel circuit, the current splits. So we have to add all the current that has split to equate it to the total current. This is the difference with current in a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Now let's check out potential difference. A voltmeter is used to measure potential difference. So current emitter, potential difference voltmeter. Voltmeter is connected in parallel. It's connected parallel to the component in the circuit. So emitter is connected in series. Voltmeter is connected parallel to the component. Let's take a look at what that means. This is the power source, the battery, the dry cell. Here, this is how we connect the voltmeter. The voltmeter is connected in parallel. It's not along the same path of current. It's connected in a new path of current. So this is the connection of the voltmeter to the dry cell. This would mean that we are measuring the potential difference supplied by the power source. This is the total potential difference that we are measuring here. This V represents total potential difference in the circuit. And remember, here we are talking about terminal potential difference. We are taking the potential difference from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. This is not the EMF. I cover EMF in a different video. So let's take a look at the potential difference across each bulb. Total potential difference is divided into these three parts here, or however many components you have in the circuit. So when we want to count the total potential difference in the circuit, we have to add all the individual potential difference across each component. Everything must sum up to this total potential difference. This is the total energy supplied to the circuit. The energy cannot be more than that or less. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So this is how we count potential difference in a series circuit. Now let's look at a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across the dry cell will be the same across all the different parts. Now, we have to measure by the parts. So this is one path of current here, this line, from the positive terminal back to the negative terminal here. So along this whole path, the potential difference is the total potential difference. And then we go through the second path. So from the positive terminal, the current can also flow like this and go back to the negative terminal. So this along this path, the potential difference is the total potential difference. Same goes to the third part. From here, it goes here, all the way here. So the potential difference across each path of current 
will be the total potential difference. So V here will be equals to V1 here because along this path there's only one other component. Along this path there's only one other component and along this path there's only one other component. So V will be equals to V1 which is equals to V2 which is equals to V3 because the energy is from terminal to terminal. So this is one path, this is another path and this is another path. All, all, all across all parts, the full potential difference is supplied. Let's compare with series circuit again. The series circuit, the potential difference is divided into all the three components because along the one path, there are three components here. So the energy needs to be supplied to drive the charge through the three components. The total potential difference in this circuit will be the sum of all the potential difference across the components. Whereas, for the parallel circuit, the potential difference is the same across all the components. So V equals to V1 equals to V2 equals to V3. So this is in reverse with the current. For current in a series circuit, the value of the current is the same across all the components. The current that passes through all the components has the same value. But the potential difference has to be added up. Whereas for a parallel circuit, current across each path has to be summed up but the potential difference across all the different parts are the same. So it's just the reverse. Now let's look at resistance. In a series circuit, this R here represents the total resistance in the circuit. The total resistance circuit is very easy to calculate. All you have to do is sum up all the resistance. So we add all the resistance together to get the total resistance. However, in a parallel circuit, it becomes a bit more complicated. In a parallel circuit, you cannot directly find the total resistance. You cannot find R. You cannot start with R equals 2. It is wrong. You have to start with the reciprocal of R, that is 1 over R. Look at the total resistance across each path. Again, you have to look at the resistance across each path. So here, we only have one component in each path. So we only have to take one resistance, one value of resistance for each path. So 1 over R will be equals to 1 over R1 over plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So we add all the reciprocal values of the resistance here. Then we get the sum 1 over R. Total resistance is just the reciprocal of 1 over R. What does re reciprocal mean? For example, if we calculated 1 over R to be 3 out of 5, then R will be 5 over 3. So for a series circuit, very simple, just sum everything up together, just add them like normal. And then for a parallel circuit, we have to start with 1 over R. You cannot start with R. Once we get the value of 1 over R, then we get the reciprocal of 1 over R. That will give us the total resistance. Now, it gets a bit more complicated when there is a combination of series and parallel circuit. So let's take a look at this question. Let's look at the circuit first. So we have one dry cell here, positive to negative. And then we have four different bulbs here, or lamps. L3 and L4 is connected in parallel. Then we have L1 and L2 that is connected to the dry cell here. So the current comes through here, splits into two parts, and then comes back here, merges back here, and goes to the negative terminal. So this is how we know there is that it is a parallel circuit because the current splits. It takes two different paths. Now, if the resistance of all the lamps are the same at 4 ohms, what is the total resistance of the circuit? So, why don't you try the question and comment your answer below. See what you get. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do hit the like button. It really does help. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.